Hey guys, today I'm here with a book review of Caretaker by Josie Russell. Now I was sent this by the publisher in exchange for an honest review and also to celebrate the release of its sequel, Guardians, which comes out on Thursday, February 11th. I do have more information about Guardians to share with you guys as well as a few discounts and things, so if you would like to stick around to the end of the video then you can find all that out. Now back to the book I'm actually talking about. Caretaker came out this past September in 2015 and is published by Future House Publishing, which is a very small um, indie publishing house that focuses mainly on publishing middle grade and YA fiction, but this one is actually general science fiction. The world of Caretaker is set somewhere in the distant future in which all of the countries on Earth have been united under a single um, Earth government, and this government is um, basically funding and, and behind a bunch of colonization attempts where humanity is reaching out into the realms of outer space and colonizing planets that we find there. The people in this world are also a part of kind of a group of intergalactic um, peaceful nations that I kind of pictured something like the Senate in Star Wars or like um, the the whatever that's called in Star Trek. Bad Trekkie over here, not really a Trekkie. In Caretaker, we follow a ship bound for a planet called Minia, which is located about 50 Earth years away from our planet. In order for people to travel these distances and not age significantly, we have come up with a technology that involves putting people in stasis. So kind of in like a cryogenic state where they um, go into like a, a hibernation sleep basically for the 50 years that they're traveling um, and then are awoken on their new planet where they will be the colonizers. However, due to previous bad experiences with a uh, spaceship full of unconscious people. Um, there is one person called the caretaker who is actually awake, who doesn't really have to run the ship because it's all automated and pre-programmed, but is just basically there as a failsafe in case something goes wrong. So we follow the caretaker of this specific ship named Ethan Bryant, but we learn very early on that he wasn't actually supposed to be the ship's caretaker. He actually signed up for the trip to Minia with his pregnant wife, intending to start a whole new life there, but he was the last person to be put into stasis, and before he could complete the process, the actual caretaker died, and seeing a lack of other uh, conscious candidates, the computer, the ship's um, controlling computer, named him as caretaker and locked him out of his stasis chamber. We catch up with Ethan about five years into their journey, which means that he has been alone for five years, um, trying to act as caretaker but not really having the training to do so, when suddenly another passenger awakes and it kind of throws his whole um, very solitary reality into chaos. The woman who wakes up is named Kaya, and it turns out that she is actually the wife of the previous caretaker caretaker who died and whose place Ethan has taken, and they basically bond over their shared sense of loneliness, um, Kaya with her husband now dead, and Ethan with his wife in stasis, and the fact that he knows that he will have aged 50 years and she will have stayed the same when they finally reach Minia. Ethan and Kaya have to wait a specific amount of time before they can put Kaya safely back into stasis, and during that time they develop a friendship, explore the ship, and discover that all isn't as it seems, and that they've actually been wrapped up in something much more sinister and much more dangerous than a simple colonization trip. Getting into the review, I should probably admit that I don't actually read a bunch of sci-fi, and the sci-fi that I have read um, is mainly Star Wars fiction, so I don't don't really have a huge knowledge base through which I can evaluate this book, but I will say that that very intriguing concept that I just described to you guys is what had me picking up this book in the first place and what kept me totally engaged throughout. I've honestly never read a concept quite like this and I thought it was really interesting this idea of a stasis ship and although Russell doesn't get into the nitty gritty technical details as to how this all really works, um, she provides just enough detail to make it believable and um, uh, yeah, I was just really intrigued. I do think, however, that the concept was better than the writing, which was not bad by any means, but there were certain phrases that kind of were too often repeated. Um, I mentioned on Goodreads, for example, that all of the dialogue in the first half of the book seemed to be 
either um, Kaya or Ethan telling each other that they looked tired and needed to get some rest. So it was a little bit repetitive and it just didn't really wow me in any sense of the word. So if you're looking for like literary science fiction, this is definitely not it. The best way I can think to describe this is a YA novel without any YA characters. I think Ethan is in his 30s and I believe Kaya is um, about the same age, if not maybe a little bit younger, um, but they very much interacted like a couple of teenagers. I'm not sure if that was an attempt to show um, kind of like social awkwardness after being isolated from other humans for so long, but a lot of their conversation felt very childish, a lot of their um, flirting and their um, kind of there was, a, there was a bit of insta-love going on um, that just felt very much like it belonged in a YA novel. The other thing I would say is that I definitely felt that the beginning and ending of the novel were stronger than the middle. I thought the middle got a little wishy-washy, for lack of a better word, and I think that's mainly because the world building was really inconsistent. What I mean by that is that in the beginning, when um, ev all the action is set on this one ship, um, because the um, human interaction is so limited, um, Russell does a really good job of describing the ship environment. She goes into, you know, what Ethan would be seeing, what he would be doing in his spare time, what he would be eating, how um, all of the humans in the stasis chambers would be getting kept alive. She really puts a lot of thought and detail into that. However, they make an unexpected stop at the planet Beta Alora um, later in the book, and that whole uh, setting for me was very unclear. I definitely think Russell did a good job of describing the um, alien race that they come in contact with there, the Alorans. I think she described them well enough that I could actually picture what they should look like in my head, but just the planetary setting I didn't get a feel for at all and I thought she missed a really good opportunity to create a whole new world there. She kind of casually describes the buildings um, as that relates to um, Kaya and Ethan specifically, but you know like what did the sky look like? What did the earth look like? Um, she mentions a tree at one point and I'm like I didn't even know there was vegetation on this planet. So yeah, I just kind of felt like she missed a really amazing world building opportunity there. However, even with all of these shortcomings, I do think that the concept was so strong and intriguing, to me at least, that it definitely raised my opinion of the book and I ended up giving it three stars. I think this is Russell's first novel, so I can definitely see that there's room for improvement, but she had a really interesting concept going, and I've been sent an advanced reader copy of the sequel, Guardians, like I mentioned, and I'm very intrigued to see what she does in subsequent volumes. Speaking of the sequel, Guardians, um, it becomes available, like I said, on Thursday, February 11th, and for that first week that it's available, um, both Caretaker and Guardians will be available on Amazon as Kindle books for just 99 cents, so I will provide some links down in the description in case you guys have been intrigued by what I've shared and want to check those out. And if you're intrigued but you're more of a physical book person, they will be giving away some physical copies on Goodreads starting later this month, and they will be offering a signed copy for giveaway on their blog, so I will link to Future House Publishing in the down bar as well, and feel free, like I said, to go check that out if you are interested. But that's all I have for this video, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned about a new book that you haven't heard about yet. Um, that's always great. Hope you're having a nice day, and I will see you next time. Bye!